Bugün iki çocuğunu öldürmekle suçlanan bir annenin mahkemesini izleyeceğiz. Konuyla ilgili özeti burada geçmiştim. Önce onu izlerseniz mahkemeyi daha net anlarsınız. Yok izlemem diyorsanız siz bilirsiniz ama bence izleyin. Stephen Blair ve Stony Gage, Mitchell Blair'ın dört çocuğundan ikisiydi. Mitchell 36 yaşında, boşanmış bir anneydi. Neredeyse iki senedir bu çocuklar ortada yoktu. Anne Mitchell çocukları teyzesine gönderdim. Geldiler ama artık evden eğitim alacaklar, okula gitmiyorlar gibi bahanelerle yokluklarını örtmeye çalışmıştı. Ta ki 24 Mart 2015 Salı sabahına kadar. O gün aylardır kirasını ödemeyen Mitchell Blair'ın evi tahliye ediliyordu. Mitchell o sırada evde değildi. Polis ekipleri tek tek eşyaları dışarı taşırken sıra oturma odasındaki dondurucuya gelmişti. İçini boşaltmak için açtıklarındaysa... Michelle Blair confessed to killing her daughter Stoney and her son Stephen and kept them in a freezer in her apartment on Detroit's east side for more than two years. Birazdan izleyeceğiniz mahkemede Mitchell Blair her şeyi detaylıca anlatmış. Bu yüzden fazla uzatmadan onun anlatmadığı küçük detaylardan hızlıca bahsedeceğim. Bu kadın 36 yaşında ve iki evlilik yapmış. İkisi de başarısızlıkla sonuçlanmış. Kızları ilk eşinden, oğulları ikinci eşinden. Boşandıktan sonra eşleri nafakalarını yatırmıyor. Yaklaşık 50 bin kadar da ödenmemiş nafaka borçları var. Bu da Mitchell'e ağır geçim sıkıntısı yaşatıyor. Olayın ortaya çıktığı günde evinin tahliye edilmesinin sebebi kirasını ödeyememesi. Girdiği işlerde uzun süredik iş tutturamıyor. Fatura ve kira için sürekli akrabalarından para istiyor vesaire. Geçmişine dönersek çocukken annesinin bir arkadaşı tarafından cinsel istismara uğrayan Mitchell bu konuda çok hassas. Çocuklarının okul dışında evden çıkmasına izin vermiyor. Eve de yabancı kimseyi sokmuyor. Çocukken uğradığı cinsel saldırı ve ailesinin bunu umursamaması için de hep yarı olarak kalmış. Sanki bunun acısını çıkarmak istercesine de çocuklarını sürekli eziyet etmiş. Gördüğünüz üzere evin hali de içler acısı. Perdeler sürekli çekik ve sanki terk edilmiş bir ev havasında. 2005 yılında sosyal hizmetler çocukların bakımsız olduğu ve evde düzensiz bir yaşam olduğuna dair ihbar alıyor. Mitchell aile danışmanlığı ve psikolojik desteğe yönlendiriliyor. Muhtemelen oraları da hiç gitmedi. Ayrıca devlet tarafından gıda yardım yapılmasına ve aylık 771 dolar yardım parası bağlanmasına karar verilmiş. What did you do to Stony Blair that makes you guilty of premeditated murder? She raped my son. I intentionally killed her. How did you do that? Um, starting from the beginning, when I found out about what Stony was doing, to it was nine months later after finding out about Stephen. So for the whole nine months we were in the house, she was still raping my child. I did not know that. When I first found out, after she told me. Um, I took a minute because I was not understanding, you know, what was, that she did that to him. But um, I repeatedly punched her. On many occasions, my son, I told him to tell me every single thing she did to him. So as she was telling me, he was telling me more and more things that she did. I assaulted her every time he told me what she did to him. Um, by assault, I mean I punched her. I have put a bag over her head till she lost consciousness. Um, I threw hot water on her, scalding hot water from the faucet. Um, Did you hit her in the head with a wooden yes, stick? Yes, I hit her in her head multiple times, over and over. Was that shortly before she died? That was actually days before she died and the day she died. Okay. Um, I hit her on her back. Like with her tailbone, um, I kicked her. Okay, I just want to clarify a few things. And perhaps you don't know, but did this happen on or about May twenty fifth, two thousand fourteen? To the May twenty fifth is actually the day she died. Okay. Well, the day I killed her. And. You said you killed her by putting a grocery bag over her head? Yes, um, that day, 
would tell me different things because she was doing this to him for years, and I did not know that. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't find out until nine months later she had started with Stephen. She ruined my son, okay? She started with Stephen before he even started. So, yes, I put a bag over her head, but um, it got worse that day. Yes, I did. It got worse that day because she would tell me how she would take her pad, her menstrual pad, and squeeze her blood out in his mouth, okay? You meant to kill her? I definitely meant to kill her. Okay. It wasn't an accident? No, not at all. Okay. If I had a chance to do it again, I would. When you went and got the grocery bag and suffocated her, that was your intent? Yes. Okay. Um, she was standing in the bathtub. I was throwing hot water on her. My son was standing to my right outside the bathroom door, and he was telling me everything he was telling me. I looked at her, and I'm like, you did this? And she was like, yes. So I actually had a stick, and I was hitting her in the head. Every time he told me something, I hit her very hard in her head, and I was throwing hot water on her. And when I actually took her out of the bathroom, I took her back in her room, and I just kept staring at her, and I said, excuse my language, and she admitted to me that she hated she hated Steven. She hated everybody. And I'm asking her why. She says, because everybody always thinks so cute. And I'm like, so you brother, because you get what I'm saying. So it's, and I do not feel any remorse for what I did to Stoney. Because she had no remorse for what she did to my son. And it's not only raped him, she gang raped him with Steven. Where did that happen? What? Where did it? The death. Her Where actual death? Yes. Um, I, right Not the location of the house. Where did you live at the time? Oh. Is that in the city of Detroit? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, go ahead. Can we ask um, Ms. Blair if she ever actually saw or witnessed any of these acts with regard to Stoney or Stephen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you ever actually see anything? Of any sexual abuse of any kind between either Stephen and Stoney. And I reject her question, but I will answer it because no one will say that this did not happen because it actually did. I just want to have a clear record because so far all you've told me was that you just heard it. Did you ever? And that they admitted it. it. No, I did okay. not. You okay. get, he'll use the bathroom and say, "Mom, my butt hurts when I poop." I, I don't know. So I started giving him 100% juice to make his stool softer, maybe to help him use but it, That wasn't the problem. It wasn't his stool. It was that he was being raped, okay? My son looked me in my eyes, and he gave me a very detailed account of everything they did. He was not a violent boy. He is a very sweet little boy. So she started telling me many things, many things. And I also asked her, so why didn't Stephen tell me? Because Stoney was going upstairs beating Steven's ass, threatening him. I didn't want to look at him. I didn't want to, I didn't want to look at him, so I told him to go to his room. When it came time to eat, I didn't want to take no food up, so I sent Stoney up because she volunteered, not knowing at that time that Stoney was raping either of them. But every time she went upstairs, I wouldn't have known if she hit him or not because I had put many bruises on him. So every time she went upstairs, she admitted to me that she was hitting him also, knocking the hell out of him, telling him, you better not tell her nothing. Okay. You get what I'm saying? I understand. When she admitted these things to you, were you always being physical with her? The first time, no. We were sitting there. Okay. She denied it, denied it, denied it constantly. And I'm like, Stoney, you better tell me to <laughs> sitting here. He don't know nothing about it. He constantly, t you get what I'm saying? Who would admit that? Who would admit that if they did not do it? All right, tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, basically the same thing. Can I ask you a question first? The people standing behind me, this woman who just asked the question, is she trying to make it seem like this did not happen? No, no, no. no. We just have to have a clear record. Okay. This is moment. your time to talk. Go Can ahead. A All we're trying to do is just make sure that the record is clear. Okay. And so don't worry about the one behind you. Just do it. I mean, right now, ma'am, this is just you choosing to plead guilty. The people do not have any sort of plea agreement. Yeah, because, you know, it's like I'm willing to take a, a polygraph test. It's like because I understand 
people don't want to hear me, period, but I'm going to take it on everything. I'm listening to you. Tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, I came home one day. My daughter, my oldest, met me at the door, and she's like, Mom, come see what he's doing with his dials. And I'm like, what is he doing? He was making one dial, his little wrestle man, hump on top of the other. No, I'm like, why was you doing that? I said, anybody ever do this to you? He said, no. I said, then why are you doing that? And he said, yes, Stephen did. And I was like, so this is the first I'm hearing about that period. This was nine months before Stoney. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stoney wasn't downstairs. And I, she was always in the background. I wish to God I had questioned everybody together, but I didn't. Would but, you say this was around August 30th, 2012? No, this was before August 30th. August 30th is when he died. Okay. This was when, maybe a week, a week and a half. Before he died? Yes. Okay. So that, telling you that set off some action? Yes, I went upstairs you, because Stephen was upstairs in him, his and room. And I went upstairs and I said, Stephen, you said you was humping on him. And then Stephen stood up and he looked at me. And right then I could tell, I could tell something was wrong in his face because he was just like this. Ain't normal kid. I know my kid would have been like, what? That's not what he did. He stood up and looked at me like he had lost his mind. Okay, and it, it just hearing that from him had me f***ed up in my head, period. But I asked him, I said, Stephen, tell me the truth. Was you humping on He said, yes, but that was all. And I said, did you hump on him with your underwear off? He said, no. He yelled out, yes, he did. You, you get what I'm saying? You f***ing brother. So I'm looking at them, too. I'm looking at them like, what? I can't understand. So I start punching Stephen. You know, I'm, I'm like, what the f are you doing to him? I just, I just start asking him questions. At this point, it's just spilling out. He's just spilling out. And mom, and he's doing like this, and he do this thing almost every night. He tell me how he was, the reason I put bags over Steven's head, is because it, I thought he in the bed. My son was never a bad wetter. Didn't know it was Steven waking up every morning, pissing on like he was a damn piece of shit, okay? They had bunk beds. Stephen would get out the bed in the middle of the night. You would rape him in his own bed. You would pee on him instead of going to the bathroom. I'm waking up every morning thinking he was a bedwetter. So we just wash him up and go, you, you, you a bedwetter. Let's talk so, about what you did to Stephen. The reason I put bags over Stephen's head because my son told me that the plastic on his bed, because I thought he was a bedwetter, he said, sometimes, Mom, I couldn't breathe. Stephen was laying on me, and he had my face down in the plastic on the bed. I couldn't breathe, and he was humping on my butt like a basketball. That's when I got a garbage bag and started putting it over Stephen's head. And I started asking him, bitch, you know what I'm saying? You see what this feel like? You can't breathe? You stop my... That's my son. You was six years old at the time. You get what I'm saying? So I put a bag over his head. He lost consciousness. I did that a couple times. Um, he told me that would be face down. He had stuff around his neck. So I grabbed Steven and I grabbed a belt and I put a belt around his neck and I lifted him up. Like, do you like how this feels? Being choked with a belt. So I dropped him. I held him up until he lost consciousness as well. You were intending to... No, I did not intend to kill Steven. No, no, no. I'm not. Listen to my question. You were intending to inflict serious, serious physical harm, but not kill him. Definitely. Okay. Did you also punch him? Yes, I did. Multiple did times. Him? Yes, I did. Okay. You talked about choking him. Did you also burn him? Yes, I did. Okay, how did you do that? Hot water. Scalding hot water. In our bathroom, the hot, the hot water gets extremely hot. So, um, his private area, I stood him in the bathtub naked. You, you, you my son with Joe, you know? So yes, I threw hot water in his genital area multiple times. Multiple times. Every time Stephen peed in my son's eyes. He put his in his ears, his nose. He peed. He even told me one time, Mom, and in my eyes it was it was he said it was it was gooey. But it wasn't pee. And then right then, it was like, I didn't even know a nine-year-old could ejaculate. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I threw hot water on him repeatedly. Did it make him burn? Yes, it did. His skin came off. Did you His also make him drink Windex? Yes, I did because 
told me in the middle of the night he had took him in the basement and he made him drink the blue stuff from under the sink. And I'm like, what? What blue stuff? So I walk downstairs. He showed me what I said. You made me drink Windex. And then I went back to like years before. And I'm like, is this what was wrong with him? I thought you had the stomach flu where you vomit and have diarrhea. You get what at the same time? This is at that time, this is what was going around. This is what I thought had. He didn't. Steven made him drink Windex. So yes, I made that boy drink Windex. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify the record. Okay, again, you knew you were seriously harming him, but you didn't intend to murder him. No. Okay. But your actions ultimately caused his death. Yes, they did. Okay. okay. He was in your custody. I don't claim him as my son now, and I do not claim Stoney as my daughter. I have two children. That's it. Stephen and Stoney are demons. Period. Listen to my question. At the time he died, he was in your custody or care? Yes. Okay. How old was he? Stephen was nine. And again, did this happen at your house in the city of Detroit? Yes. For what Stephen did, yeah. that was punishment. All right. And if I had killed Stephen intentionally, I definitely would be proud to say I did. But I didn't. But I know all the things that I did to him, how I hurt him, I know it did cause his death. You know what I'm saying? It was like that day, the day that he died, I went to his room. It was throw up in front of him on the bed. I got him up. He said he had to go to the bathroom, but he couldn't use the bathroom. By the time we came out the bathroom, his breathing was, it was crazy. Stephen usually has a strong heartbeat, but it was really faint, really, really faint. And then all of a sudden, he just started going like this, and I was holding him. We were both sitting on the floor. Were you starving him at this time as well? No, I, was not, I never starved him, and that's another thing that they're not understanding. He may have lost weight. We didn't always eat together. I thought him and Stephen was very close, so Stephen would manipulate me. Mom, can we eat up in our room? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. I'm thinking that's his, his, that's his best friend. That's his brother. That's how he made his thing, but that's a lie. So, yes. Now, Stoney, I did starve her. He, your big ass, she was 13. My son told me how she used to sit on his face, and she said, he said, Mom, it stinks real bad. And she was, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I did. I did. And then oatmeal is all that girl got. And she's lucky she got that once a day. Stoney only got oatmeal? Is that what you're oatmeal saying? once a day. She's okay. very lucky she got that. I and I even have to hide the fact that I was giving her oatmeal for because he didn't want me to feed her. And he had every right to right. feel that way. Hold on. Just where can we get... No, I'm, I'm good. You're okay? Okay. I just have a few more questions. When you were physically harming Stephen, was it ever your intent to also cause any sort of serious mental harm? Just what well, I don't understand what you mean. When you were hurting him physically, was it also your intent to cause any sort of serious mental harm? What do you mean? Mentally damage him? Yes. Like beating him in the head? No. Like making it so that his, his thoughts aren't right. No, never. Make sense? Okay. Physical punishment intent? on what you did to my child. So you were only intending physical punishment? Yes. Okay. All right, now, just so that I'm clear, you weren't allowing them to treat your other children like this, were you? What do you mean? You weren't allowing them to sexually assault. I wasn't okay. allowing right, that. The, I, did, I never knew. That's exactly, you get what I'm saying? That's exactly what I wanted to know. You didn't know until afterwards. It's like... Am I right? Yes. Okay. It's this one instance, I was asleep. Why you didn't tell me? He said, Mom, I even ran in the hallway and I had your hand. I was asleep. My son ran out and grabbed my hand. He was six and he was doing like this, trying to wake me up. Stephen was grabbing him back by the back of his shirt, pulling me. And I said, why didn't you just scream out? He said, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? He even had my hand pulling on me, trying to wake me up. And since I'm a hard sleeper, I didn't wake up right up under my nose. So... Man, I don't regret none of this. I don't regret any of it. F*** is my son. That's my baby. There's no way that his brother and sister should know what he feels like on the inside. There's no way. Understood. I don't feel no remorse for the death of them demons. Okay. All right. I'm going to accept the plea unless either counsel's dissatisfied. Oh, medical examiner's report. Go ahead. Your Honor, the medical examiner report for Stephen. Gage Berry is Joint People and Defense Exhibit Good. Number One. It's dated March. It's dated March 27, 2015. The medical examiner's report for Stoney and Blair 
is Joint People and Defendant Exhibit Number Two, all dated March 27, 2015. Okay. Um, they're accepted and they're yeah, admitted. Um, I'm wondering if Ms. Blair ever called the police to report this. Can you answer that question? Why is she asking? We're just trying to make a clear record. You mean to report what they had done? No. What they had done to No. But after I found out about Steven, even before I started hitting him, I did actually call the police on advice and I told them like a hypothetical situation like if, because I was scared, like you get what I'm saying, what's going to happen with my other two? I definitely want to lose and I definitely, I was definitely about to leave after that just happened, but I called the police and I'm asking, asking them in a case where it's one brother that's been raping the other, what can be done? Will they take both kids out of the home? And he said, well, actually, yes, they would take both kids out of the home, but this is a case for a CPS. And they said, is that, did that happen to you? And I said, no, it's actually your friend. And he said, the best thing I can do is tell you to call CPS and they can guide you further on what to do. And they said, but basically it has to be an investigation, so both will be taken out of the home. You get what I'm saying? I so, understand. And how they manipulate, I was their mother. I was their mother. So if they can manipulate me, I, no. Did no. You? And I was not letting Stoney go anywhere. I'm glad. I actually was going to turn myself in right after Stephen died. And I told my son that, you know, I, I, I, I got to go and I got to go turn myself into the police. I got to go turn myself in. And he said, turn yourself into what? And I said, turn myself into the police. That means I got to go because I killed somebody. And then he said, I don't want you to go. When he said that, that was it. So I put Steven in the freezer and I said, I'm going to stay with my kids as long as possible. And I'm glad I did, because if I had not have done that, I would not have found out about Stoney. You see what I'm saying? So everything happened how it was meant to happen. Mahkemede iddia ettiği kardeşler arasındaki istismar deli yetersizliğinden dolayı reddedildi. Geride kalan iki çocuğu 17 yaşındaki Gabriel ve 8 yaşındaki Metu devlet korumasına alındı. Mitchell mahkemede sürekli Metu'u korumaya çalıştığını, her şeyi bu yüzden yaptığını iddia etmişti. Doktor kontrolünden geçen 8 yaşındaki Metu'nun sırtında uzatma kablosuyla kırbaçlanma izleri bulundu. Eski ve yeni toplamda 25 yarı izi vardı ve bu annesi Mitchell'e aitti. Kızı Gabriel'in ise ön dişleri Mitchell'in saç maşasıyla dövmesi sonucu kırıktı. Sol gözünün üstünde de kalasla vurulma sonucu bir yırtık vardı. Yani sağ kalan iki çocuk da düzenli olarak şiddet görmüştü.